Hi, my name is Andy Fiore, and on January 28th, 2024, uh, my film Invisible No More will be premiering at the Vogue Theater in Vancouver. Um, and so on the panel will be um, Catherine Wiseman Hawks and uh, Hakes. Hakes. I'm sorry, I always say Hawks. <laughs> okay. I want to rewrite your name because I love birds. I have no we can idea. Keep that in the video because it adds an element of humor. I always say it rhymes with chocolate cake with Hakes. an H and an S on the there end. There you go. I, I, oh, I blew it. So, anyway, <laughs> I want to introduce everybody. Well, you're already introduced now. Uh, Catherine <laughs> Wiseman Hakes. Um, who is a, a neuro, neuroscientist, a professor at McMaster University, and is doing wonderful work in the brain injury community in Ontario. Hi, Catherine. Welcome. My area is brain injury. Uh, so all my clinical work and research is, is in brain injury. I was involved in a research study a number of years ago where we were <clears throat> looking at people with brain injury who had interacted with the criminal legal criminal justice system and I was the lead investigator along with a colleague where we were um, wanted to understand the communication experiences of these individuals with a brain injury and how that impacted them while they were incarcerated and you know when they had um, come into the community so they were community dwelling you know, what really struck me was the fact that, you know, none of these people had ever, again, had support, had help, had rehabilitation. And, you know, they were, it was such an honor to bear witness to that. And, and you know, I remember at the end of this three hour conversation with this individual who will, I will always remember. I mean, I, I can remember the conversation, like so much of it, even though it was so, you know, a number of years ago, probably 2017, 18. Um, <clears throat> I, and, and I just thought, you know, imagine what we, we could do if we could provide some access to rehabilitation. And so I thought about this for a couple of years. And then I just thought like, well, how on earth would I do that? I'm just one single person. I'm, you know, I'm a part-time academic. I have, you know, I, I don't have, I'm not wealthy by any means whatsoever, but I kept thinking about it. And then during COVID, you know, I really saw again, the disparities and access to service and in Toronto, likewise, we have a, you know, a large population of people who are precariously housed and et cetera. And I just thought, you know, I just felt compelled to do something. I, I just thought like, I, I have to do something. So I reached out to the head of the Ontario Brain Injury Association and I said, like, am I crazy? Like, I'm thinking about starting a nonprofit organization with my own almost non-existent funds in the middle of a pandemic. What do you think? <laughs> and she said, I think that's a fantastic idea and I love what you're proposing. And she said, let me go to my board. The biggest ask is psychotherapy, counseling. Um, we have um, naturopathic medicine, we have neuropsychology, occupational therapy, music therapy. You know, we really try to um, meet the, the individual's needs. Like, so we don't necessarily dictate what, what they should have. Um, we say, well, what do you think you need? And then we, we may say, well, we suggest maybe this might be more helpful, but, but that's, that's the way we do it. So that's the Compassionate Justice Fund. And then the Compassionate Justice Speaker Series, which is completely unrelated, but we have the same name, is a speaker series that's run out of quite a large church in Toronto. Um, <clears throat> they do a lot of, of um, social justice work in that particular church as well. It's a great parish. Um, and uh, so they... A couple of times a year, they will have someone come in and they speak about topics in the criminal legal system. So that's why I reached out to them, because I thought that this might be um, a good place uh, to start. What is it that you, as a clinical neuroscientist, would like to achieve in this life? Um, well... In, in, in my life as a speech language pathologist and clinical neuroscientist, for me, I, um, I guess it would boil down to, I think my life's callings are truly seeing people, 
like truly, truly seeing the essence of who someone is and providing loving, guiding mentorship. You know, yes, we're clinicians. Yes, we're professionals, but we're, we're parents. We're aunts, uncles, people with lived experience, and we care deeply about children and, and young people, and we want to be able to provide something that can help. You know, as a society, we are only as strong as, as you know, when we lift each other up. And I uh, just have such great respect for you for what you're doing and your resiliency and, you know, the idea of as clinicians and lawyers and whatever, you know, we have our textbooks, but it is the storybooks that, that really make the difference. Um, so I, I guess that would be some of the reasons why I would like to be there. And I will also share that I would be paying for my own flight and my own time personally. You know, I have no funding to do that. Um, but I feel that if, if you'd be willing to have me, I would just really love to be part of it. Oh, I am more than willing to have you. Uh, Thank you. Is it Miss <laughs> Yeah, because I didn't want you to think I'm barging in there. Like. No, no.